In this video, I'll be discussing DMM programming in MATLAB. I'll be using the 34460 and 34461A programming examples as my test code. This video can also be used as an introduction to instrument programming in MATLAB using Skippy commands. The structure of this video will be similar to the Visual Studio video that I posted and have linked here. Please watch that if you are interested in programming in Visual Studio. My name is David Tu, and my avatar for this video will be Joseph Decreux. I figure if you're using MATLAB, you have some swagger. I'll be going over some basic instrument communications in MATLAB and the usage of the instrument control library. I'll be discussing developing in MATLAB and some of the best practices that I use, including try catch routines and a function to capture instrument errors. In this exercise, I'll configure the DMM to measure voltage, current, resistance, frequency, and temperature. And finally, I'll run an example program in MATLAB to show some basic debugging techniques. Let's go ahead and get started. I already have MATLAB open. I have our 2012B version. Uh, it shouldn't really matter as the programming examples are fairly generic, um, so you shouldn't have any problems with other versions of MATLAB. However, the one thing that you do need in your MATLAB is a toolbox called the Instrument Control Toolbox. You can check that by typing in the VER command. And you can see here that I have the Instrument Control Toolbox installed. So check that out and make sure you have that uh, installed or else these examples won't really work out for you. The next thing I wanted to do is set my working directory to th my program examples directory. Um, here I have uh, unzipped the MATLAB program examples into my thumb drive. Um, you can double click here and open up the program examples, but the actually better way to do that is to set your working directory in MATLAB by pressing the browse for folder button and just uh, navigating to th the correct directory. By doing that, you can actually run the programs a lot easier. Let's go ahead and open up the functions examples.m file, which actually will configure the DMM for the different um, measurement settings. Double click on that, and it brings up the MATLAB editor. So in the MATLAB editor is a different window than the, the MATLAB environment. It is important to note that these example programs are structured to be a building block that users can understand and modify. It's not really the most efficient way or the uh, best way that uh, you can program, but it's, it's more structured for readability for new users. First thing I wanted to discuss in the MATLAB program is addressing. So in this line, I have the DUT address as TCP something something something, but um, I've given examples for GPIB LAN addresses, USB addresses. So um, the easiest way to get the IO address is to open up uh, Agilent Connection Expert and click on the instrument that you want to talk to and just copy and paste the visa address. You can actually also use uh, aliases if you have those set up. And then once you have the DUT address assigned, then you can actually uh, open up a handle to your to your instrument by using the Visa Agilent um, command. This is a good time to discuss best practices in instrument coding. Let's go ahead and go back up to the top where I skipped out over a few lines. Um, one of the things that I like to do at the very beginning is to clear out any connections with instruments. You can clear the workspace in MATLAB, but it doesn't always clear out all the instrument connections. So we found that if you do a instrument find and then close out any of those objects that are found, uh, and deleting them, that'll clear out any handles that MATLAB might have uh, hidden from you. Another best practice to use is a try-catch routine. So basically a try-catch will try to run your main body of code. And then if there is an error that is thrown for any reason, um, it'll actually uh, be caught by this catch routine, and then it'll just report on what the error is. And um, finally, it'll delete all the objects. Delete all objects is a function that we wrote um, that basically contains all the code from this top code right here, this, this new objects thing. So it's a function. Another function that we have is the check DMM error. Um, if we go back to the MATLAB window, um, you'll see that we have the delete all objects um, function here. We also have our check DMM error, which is another function. Let's go ahead and open that. 
And we see here that the function basically sends a system error query and then reads that error back from the instruments and says, hey, if there's no error found in that string, um, go ahead and continue with your program. However, if there is an error, we'll actually continue to send over that system error query and then um, repeat that until we can uh, find the no error string. Once that's finished, we'll actually throw an exception and report on all those uh, errors as a string. Going back to the function examples.m file, I had mentioned about uh, sending commands and receiving commands, but I didn't really actually talk about how you do those. So um, the easiest way to do that is actually by sending an fprintf statement to the DMM and then followed by the command that you want to send over. That'll send the command to the instrument. And then if you want to read the instrument response back, then you do an uh, fscanf into a variable. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the commands to configure your DMM. In my first configuration, I configure the DMM for uh, voltage DC, 100 volts, with 100 microvolts of resolution. And then to make a reading, I do a read question mark to actually s initiate the reading. And I do an F scanf to get the response back from the DMM. These commands that can actually be found in the Agilent TrueVolt DMM Operating and Service Guide, which is a zip file that you can download. And once you open it up, you can find the Skippy commands under the Skippy UR subsystem. And the commands that I'll be using are under the Configure subsystem. Going back, we can take a look at the other commands. Um, here we configure the AC voltage, um, which is the same range, but here we uh, have a uh, bandwidth command that um, sets it to be um, 20, 20 hertz bandwidth. So uh, the trick with the bandwidth command is to set it to be lower than your input frequency, which will allow the DMM to accurately sample your frequency. And then we go through DC current and AC current, and then four wire, or ohms two wire, and then four wire. The four wire command is a little bit special because this is the only one that we, we actually don't send the c range and the resolution command. Um, by not having that in there, it'll actually auto range the DMM uh, for the four wire resistance and then let the DMM choose what it should do. Then we roll through frequency. Uh, frequency is a little bit funny because we not only configure the bandwidth, but we also configure the voltage range first. So in frequency, you configure the, the bandwidth first and then the voltage range separate, uh, kind of opposite of the uh, voltage settings. And then temperature, we have a width to select which type of thermistor we're using and then um, the range of the resist thermistor. That's about it for configuring the DMM. Let's go ahead and do a live run. I'm going to scroll back up, and I'm going to set a debug breakpoint right after we do the star at the end. So I'm just going to press over here on this left-hand margin. And we're about ready to press run, but I want to be able to view both the editor and the MATLAB window on the same screen. So let me set that up real quick. And so back in the editor, let's go ahead and press run. We'll notice that one of the first things that is echoed back is the star at the end response. Came back uh, talking to my uh, instrument 418, so that's good. Uh, we can actually step through each of the uh, command lines by pressing this step button. And that'll give me the DC voltage results and check the DMM error. Thankfully, no error. And we can actually run through each of these functions and see that we're getting results. And that's the end of that function. So that's about it for MATLAB today. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time. And Joseph DeCura reminds you that with Agilent, MATLAB, and some attitude, you can accelerate your testing.